Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this calico cat using Procreate. I'll then briefly show you the printing process as well as the printer I used to turn my digital artwork into fine art Shickly prints. I am using a Generation 2 Apple Pencil with Procreate. Remember to turn your screen down to half brightness. This will avoid the issue of really dark prints and ensure you end up with something that resembles your digital file. If you are not familiar with Procreate, then have a look at this video where I go over the basics in 10 minutes. I am going to do this cat exactly as I would if I were painting it in oils. I am basically sticking with very few functions in Procreate, a few layers, a few brushes, arrays and paint. So you can create great artwork with very limited knowledge of this program. So let's get started then and I will talk you through what I am doing as we go along. The brushes that I am using are as follows. Soft brush, turpentine brush, derwent, pencil, stucco, oil rich. I've started off with a sage green background and have drawn in my cat's outline in a red pencil. I've done this on separate layers. On a new layer in between the background and the outline, I have started to block in my cat using the turpentine brush. I then start another layer and start a secondary block in. I want to get the bare bones of the cat established so I can start putting in a bit more detail. I'm still using the turpentine brush at this stage. I start a separate layer for the eyes. I want the eyes to be much more detailed. By keeping my brush strokes much smaller and adjusting the size of my brush, I'm able to get a much more glassy effect. I'm switching between the soft brush, oil rich brush and stucco brush. By switching between a small brush and a textured brush, this really helps create the effect of the cat's eye. And by keeping it all on a separate layer, it means that it, I don't have to worry about going really loose with its fur and losing the detail of the eyes. I can just rub out any accidental strokes. I'll then start a new layer and begin to put in a bit more detail into the cat's fur. I am, however, painting this very much like I would in oils. My eyes are my central point of focus and I am gradually getting looser as I move outwards. This helps direct my viewer to where I want them to look and mimics how the human eye sees an image. I am using a combination of the oil rich brush, the stucco brush and the turpentine brush, but I am using them at a smaller size. I am using the pressure sensitivity of my Apple Pencil to control the transparency of the brush strokes. I am pressing harder in areas I want to emphasise and lighter in areas that are less important. I am using the stucco brush to create a bit of texture on the bridge of the cat's nose and then continuing this up onto the cat's forehead. I need to vary the marks I make, so in some areas I need smoother marks, in other areas heavily textured marks and in some areas just looser but more sketchy marks. This will help add interest to my image and give it a more arty feel, which is what I want. I want it to feel like an artist's interpretation of a cat rather than a hyper-realistic reproduction of the photo. I am trying to capture the essence of this cat, which to me is that wistful downwards look. The great thing about digital painting is that you can try things without worrying about losing your painting. If I don't like what I've done, I can rub it out and try something else. So you'll see in this demo in the later stages of the painting, me trying a lot of things out to see how it looks. If you are a painter in oils or acrylic, I can't stress how great these programs are for trying out compositions before you start painting. I will often work out my artwork digitally before I start doing anything in oils. I am trying to figure out where I need that soft edge, hard edge, highlight, etc. If I don't like what I've done, I just undo it. I'm also constantly minimising my screen too. 
I'm viewing my progress as a small image of about 10 by 10 centimeters. You just need to pinch the screen and drag your fingers together to do this. Seeing my artwork very small makes it easier to view my artwork as a whole and this helps me to make decisions about what to do next. I decided that I'd quite like to keep some of the red pencil I'd used to sketch out my cat to begin with. It helped give the image a sketchy look which was what I was aiming for and I liked the contrast also between the dark blue of the fur and the bright red of the pencil line. I should have mentioned that I'd used a blue palette for my dark blacks. This is because blue and orange are complementary colours. When you lay them next to each other, they look great. Using blue and orange just help give a bit more dimension to the artwork than, say, using black from my orange palette. In the final parts of this artwork demo, I am just trying to figure out those edges and also how light I wanted to go with that white chest fur. On the far left side, I used a pencil tool just to scribble in some highlighted detail. I also used the pencil tool on the whiskers, which I do on a separate layer in case I need to rub out the ends of the whiskers very slightly. If I do this, I will use my rubber at about 50% opacity. It helps give the illusion that the whiskers are disappearing away from the cat's face. Once I'm happy with my artwork, I will print a tester just to see how the colours come out. So here we are now in Photoshop. Sometimes I do need to lighten my artwork a little. There are various ways to do this. In today's video, I thought I'd show you the brightness tool. This is in the adjustments panel and is a very simple way to brighten your image if it is a little dark. It doesn't give you as much control as the levels adjustment, which I showed you in a different video, but it is a very simple way to lighten up your artwork if you are not familiar with Photoshop. I also wanted to show you how to enlarge your image. I usually create my artwork at 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters, 300 DPI. You must export it from Procreate as a TIFF file. This is very important as you can enlarge a TIFF file by 100% without any loss of quality. A JPEG will pixelate, but the image is fine today and does not need any adjustments. I am just going to print this image now straight from Photoshop. I allow Photoshop to control my colours as I find doing it this way I get minimal colour shifts. The profile setting I use is Epson sRGB. You can get profiles specifically for different papers, but I find this one works fine. The printer I am using is an Epson SC900. Here it comes, and that is it. iPad drawing to printed image in 8 minutes. I hope you are inspired to give drawing a go on your iPad. I hope you found today's video useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details on classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.